Well, so much for our 10 seconds of silence. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always by GR Dad and a bunch of bonky dogs. Bonky is right. Hi. How's it going, GR Dad? It's going all right. Better for me. I had an easier day than you did. Well, I did a lot of sitting today. Driving, driving. counts. So this is the Thursday update on the Manchego I visit. We left at like 7.15 this morning. For Miami, we got there right on time, uh, and then we got home at like 7:30 tonight. They were done with him, really done with him at like four. They said three, but I got to leave at four. So, yeah, the news is not. Hey, he's getting his surgery next Thursday, so it's just too bad. That's the news I wanted. Um, it's more complicated. It's it's pretty complicated. It I think it essentially comes down to. We don't know. Uh, so we got there at like 1045 when we were supposed to. They brought him in and they're like the, you know, the doctor is right between procedures. So she's going to look at him right now. And so just hang out. It's it's drop off, right? Like COVID vet stuff. So just hang, hang out in the parking lot. And so she did her exam and called me and she's like, so, you know, generally I'm really worried about whether or not you know he's in kind of physical shape to survive anesthesia because it's like a two-hour operation it's a big long thing and i'm like okay well you know they scheduled him for a dental at the vet and that requires general anesthesia so they obviously think he's good enough for that she's like well that's good because he does need a dental and then after he gets like he can't have a dental after the eye surgery because you can't do anything that's going to get bacteria near the face for like months after the surgery um so hey oh sorry everybody i'm gonna have to cut that out in post dogs are trying to play a game of we run around the table while house, podcast. But they have to be under the table get while out, we're get podcasting out get out of here like it's no no get out, get out. the same 10 square feet that you no. and i are in is where they have to wrestle oh my god we may have to you know put one of them in the bed or something <sighs> it's been a very frustrating day get, get, uh, okay no, hang on a second okay i locked voodoo and guac out on the porch so now they're not going to cause us any difficulties they can enjoy each other's company out there <sighs> okay. in the dark <laughs> it's all the inside lights are shining out they're there. totally fine okay so uh she was worried that he wouldn't survive the surgery i was like okay so but he's gonna have a dental and she's like okay well good like he needs to get that dental before this because he can't have it after and then he has to go on two weeks of antibiotics after the dental and then before he can have the eye surgery and i was like your people told me we could do it next week if he was a candidate and she's like oh that's not happening i was irritated yeah (laughs) i mean not at her uh but just like the the front desk being like oh this is no problem yeah so anyway um i i had pictured it as a much more routine thing like maybe it's because i had lasik or something i thought this was more non-controversial the eye surgery right this sounds very elaborate and they have to be very careful afterwards oh yeah no it's a big thing serious Yeah, yeah yeah um so and she was a little hard to talk to. I mean, her information was great, but she just kind of kept talking, and I'd be like, but and then she'd just keep talking. It's not, uh, not easier if you're not in the room with her. No, it's a, it's a difficulty of doing it over the phone. And so I'm like, okay, so we'll schedule this dental. And, like, it was scheduled for the 30th, and then I managed to get it scheduled for the 22nd. Maybe something else will open up, but it's just, like, all the vets seem to be really backed up. So that would be the soonest it could be done but she's like i'm also really worried about a few other things one is that his abdomen feels in it looks enlarged and it absolutely does like i have noticed this. she's like it looks enlarged i also had sort of a hard time hearing his heart and so she didn't explicitly say it but she's pretty worried that he has an abdominal mass which could be something like a hemangiosarcoma she's like has he had an abdominal ultrasound and i'm like nope she's like well he needs an abdominal ultrasound and an x-ray before i'll do anything So, I mean, I had been looking at him going like, man, his tum looks kind of big. It's not good. So maybe he just has a big looking tum, um, but maybe not. So in any case, we got to do that to 
I mean, obviously, we don't want to get him eye surgery if he has a hemangiosarcoma, which he totally could at 13. So it's good to get that checked out. The rescue has approved paying for that, so we just have to get that scheduled, which they were trying to do today. Um, it's 9 o'clock now, so I guess... I mean, they weren't trying to do it today, but right. I called I called our local vet, and they were going to try to get it scheduled today. So maybe tomorrow. Um, yeah, so we have to get the abdominal ultrasound and a chest x-ray. And then if that works out okay, then we have to do the dental. And then two weeks of antibiotics and then they will see him to see if he's a good candidate because he also has dry eye which is not just like his eyes are sort of dry but his tear production is too low so they put him on new eye drops for that and increased the existing eye drops that he was on and so he also needs to be on those for like four weeks and so basically once we do all of that then we can bring him back up kind of at the beginning of May and see if the dry eye is resolved and if everything else is okay, then maybe he could have the surgery that day. But the vet, she talked to me. I mean, she spent a lot of time with me both in the first conversation right after she looked at him and then at the end of the day because they had done an eye ultrasound and then some other test which came out pretty much fine kind of one eye had a previous injury and she said that eye is not a good candidate for this because there's basically adhesion between the cornea and the lens and so that they won't do that eye so they would just do the other eye they just do one um and like those tests came out okay but she's like look he he has some neurologic deficits so the way you test that in a dog is that if you take it, pick up their paw and you put it so the top of the paw is on the ground, right? So it's like upside down. Like roll it forward, right? Yeah. Then you wait to see if they pick it up and put it so the pads are on the floor, like flip it the right way. Uh, and this is, I mean, they do this. With, if you watch at your vet, they do this even if they don't tell you that they're doing it. It's a really common test for neurological function. And I knew that he wasn't good at this. It takes him a while to get his paws turned over. And apparently it's all of them. Like I had noticed it in the back. His previous records had noted it in the back, which could be if you have like arthritis in the spine, like St. Patrick did, your back legs don't work right. But he apparently has it in the front too, which is not a great thing because it means it's not the spine. Yeah. Um, she's like, he also has a little bit of a head tilt, which he does sometimes. Not like Queso and Jasmine, but it, he could have like some really mild vestibular symptoms he could have a whole bunch of other things that could be causing the problem and so in talking with her she's she seems unsure if he's a good candidate for this surgery partially because of all the health conditions and comorbidities and I mean I guess it's all sort of related to that but the question is like is it worth putting him through this surgery where you know the recovery is very long um, so if he had the surgery, he would have it on a Thursday. We would have a follow-up visit on Friday and then the next Friday. And then two weeks after that and three weeks after that, there's a lot of aftercare. He has to be in a cone, I think for three weeks. And these are all in Miami. There's these, these can't be followed up locally, no. right? You do yeah, he has to go up there. Time. Yeah. Um, and pretty extensive testing and monitoring in each of these follow-up visits. It's not just like, oh yeah, he looks good. Like they test pressures, they do all kinds of fancy stuff um yeah and then he has to be in the cone for three weeks you know there's real oh. complications risk if they're not healthy they can get glaucoma which is like super painful and also will make them blind and then you may have to get their eye removed so that's not good like that doesn't get you anything <sighs> and we're worse off yeah and she's like you know we just if the goal is to make his quality of life for whatever time he has left as good as possible we really want to make sure that this is going to pay off um you know which is the conversation we have about a lot of stuff with these old dogs you know we got Kesa when she was 13 and she lived two and a half more years yeah. right so two and yeah. a half years of being able to see is great but you really want to check him out because 13 is past the expiration date for a golden retriever you know, we were so we had our hopes up for farmers on too with the mass surgery and then she didn't uh, he didn't no i mean we got a month after we, yeah. basically yeah um i mean we probably gained a couple of weeks right because and was, that was good that was the right decision yeah so. i don't think we made the wrong choice but at the same time like in retrospect 
Uh, Save him a day of surgery, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't feel at all bad about it, but, like, in retrospect, he maybe had a week or two left instead of a month left. Um, Yeah, and, you know, he definitely felt better for a couple weeks, but, you know, it's a big thing to have gone through. So, in any case, you don't want to do something like this, which is has much more extensive aftercare, you know, a real Three risk weeks of in a cone doesn't sound easy at all. No. For, for a dog who doesn't see. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, he may be seeing a little bit by then, but he still is going to have a hard time getting around, right? It's going to make it harder. With the, Like, he won't know it's the cone. He'll be just banging into edges and door frames, right? Potentially. <sighs> yeah. yeah. So, um, in any case, so the answer is we sort of don't know. But we're, we've got a bunch of stuff to do before we decide. Yeah. So we're going to do the ultrasound and the x-ray and the dental and the antibiotics. And then I think this ophthalmologist is going to be checking in with our vet down here. Like she called our vet today without my prompting and talked to her or maybe left her a message. Um, so, you know, I think she's going to be checking in, really trying to get a sense of all the stuff that we can check to determine if he really should get it or not Um, and they're not bad things to check right i mean we kind of there's not a it's not terrible to know if he has a mass or not i mean we should definitely know like i was thinking it you know a couple days ago like maybe we should get a little ultrasound on that just to check it out so you know this is a thing that i would have wanted to do anyway um yeah. it's sort of like good and bad that she thinks so too because it means yeah. it's not just me going like man it's tom looks a little bit big <laughs> she thinks so too yeah uh and she knows better than me uh at the same time you know it confirms like it's a thing to do and i'm not carrying my personal hypochondria over to the dogs <laughs> yeah i like to i want to think that it hasn't gotten worse because i've been picking him up to put him in the cart and stuff right and i haven't noticed that it's it's different now than it was two weeks ago yeah, and it's, I mean, there's a lot of times where I look at the dogs and I'm like, man, like, <laughs> we were laying on their side. I was like, yeah. it, it looks like it's sticking out your tongue there. But then, I mean, I've noticed that, like, in Brody, he had an abdominal ultrasound. And I was like, man, tum looks kind of big. But, like, they literally looked at it a week ago. Yeah, no, he just sucks part. sucks it in when he walks around. And then when he's lying <laughs> and relaxed, it blobs out a little Don't bit. Don't we all? He's just human. I mean, dog. He's just dog. <laughs> so, um... So, is that Boots? They're having fun. Oh. They're beating on each other. He's like, not barking at me. Occasionally I'll see the King Kong Godzilla battle scene out there. It's fine. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you know, I. it's a little unclear, like, what exactly she'll be making her decision based on in totality. We definitely know things that would make her decide not to do the surgery. Um, but it's unclear if, you know... He does a fine job with the x-ray and the ultrasound and the dental and the antibiotics and all the tests come back fine. It's still a little unclear if she thinks he will be a good candidate or not. Um, And I suspect that's going to be some talking to our vet and like looking at the neurological issues and, and whatever else is there and trying to get an idea of what the rest of his lifespan looks like, you know. Because while Queso was in bad shape when she got to us, she didn't have the problems that he does. So, uh, yeah, we'll see, I guess, is basically what it comes down to. Yeah, it's more complicated than we thought a week ago. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm disappointed. Like, I obviously was super excited to just, like, oh, he's going to get this eye ultrasound, and the next week he'll have his surgery, and then it's going to be great. And so, you know, it was disappointing to be, like, uh, no, not for a month, and like maybe not then, and we're just gonna no. have to see. That was like but a bad Cliff Notes version of it. There's like the whole part in the middle that they that that is now there. You know, I think because when she talked to me the second time, she seems to have processed that. Cause, I mean, I wasn't a jerk about it, but right. Because at some point in the first conversation, she's like, you know, so she was saying something about whatever. Uh, do you want me to talk you through that? And I said. Well, the information I was given before obviously wasn't correct, so maybe you should talk me through it. Uh, Just to, like, make it clear, like, you guys told me it was... And and look, I mean, it's totally fine if it's more complicated. If they had said... You know, basically what they said is if, you know, you'll bring him in, 
we'll do the ultrasound and whatever this other test is. And if he's a candidate, then we could do the surgery the next week. And they didn't say, but there will be many other things that will determine if he's a candidate. It sounded like, oh, if everything looks fine on this ultrasound and this other test, then then that makes him a candidate. Yeah. Um, so they they just kind of didn't explain to me that there were actually a you know a ton of really complex conditions that went into that, which is fine. Um, but, but I was like, you know, like we we made this appointment because of this thing. And so when she talked to me the second time, she she kind of had processed like, oh, like we basically told her that it was just this one thing. And, uh, you know, she's like, look, with some dogs, it is like that, like that you come in, you do the ultrasound and then if it looks good, we do the surgery. But, you know, he's got a ton of complicated stuff going on. And so that makes it a more complicated thing for us to figure out. Um, So it's not like they just were kind of wrong. They with plenty of dogs, they would do it, do the test this week and do the surgery next week. And he's just it's just unfortunate. Like lied. nobody's really doing anything wrong. And everything she's saying sounds it's new. Jared, I'm sorry I cut you off. And also that you had to hear that clicking. I don't know. It's a, it's a stupid garage band thing. Uh, Vodes <laughs> went over to the bookshelf of cookbooks and grabbed one, chomped it and pulled it off. And Which so is I, behind me, but in your field of vision. I yeah. didn't want to yell into the microphone at votes that it was in fact not foods foods and then i yelled at him and he didn't care he's like i'm gonna keep chomping this. I, had to, <laughs> I had to get up and go stop him he's when he gets bored and he's getting bored more now did you not entertain this bad. dog at all today while i was gone i gave him a book and i turned the tv on but he, i don't think he got much <laughs> enrichment out of it you know it was like a lot of commercials you know yeah yeah he didn't he it didn't apparently tire him out as much anyway that's the situation so uh, we're going to have many more Chegs updates to come with ultrasounds. And so send him no abdominal mass vibes. Yeah. Send him good health vibes. Yeah. Uh, Jared, as you sort of, we maybe caught it as we were coming back in when I turned the record on, you have a bit of an agenda item. Yes. Changing I, subjects. I know. I'm mortified. I'm not really mortified, but I did. I repeated a German word of the week. I got to say, yesterday I was like, I'm pretty sure he's done this German word of the week You were nice enough not to point it out at the time. You should have just told me. Um, But we got a a message from the keeper of the wiki, (laughs) Destiny. Oh, is Destiny the keeper of the wiki? Yeah. Oh. Um, She she keeps the German word of the week page. Yes. That's great. And so um, she pointed out that we said it I said it, I think, in December. I mean, she knew, she probably knew exactly the date, but she was nice enough not to say that. <laughs> exactly this episode. Uh, so, a la Weltgesicht, I'd used before. So, I'm going to amend it. Okay. And since this is an off beat, yeah. I'll, this will be the germ word of this week still. Um, this is okay. I can still catch it. And then yeah. next week, I'll have a new one. So, I'll, I'll, use, I'll say salami tactic. <laughs> All right. What's this? All right, now, wait, did you check the wiki to see if you've done this one before? No, but I'm sure I haven't. Okay. What's a salami a sal- yeah, salami <laughs> tactic? <laughs> salami whammy. Salami is salami. Yeah. Uh, which actually is more like a pepperoni in German in Germany. Yeah. Uh, tactic. So it's a you. you what the hell is a pepperoni tactic? Yeah, I mean you can't. It's salami, sort of a thick pepperoni. Like it's a it's a like kind of like a salami. Y- I think so. It's three <laughs> inches across, right? It's <laughs> like a thick. I don't know what a salami exactly looks like. It looks kind of like what you just yeah. described. So you, it's really hard to steal a whole salami. Someone's going to notice. But if you steal like thin slices at a time, one slice at a time, soon you'll have a whole salami. <laughs> so it's stolen it all. It's like that Johnny Cash song, "One Piece at a Time." Do you know that song? Yeah, no, I don't know the song. Oh, the chorus is like, it's a 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 60 automobile. It's about him working in like a GM factory and he's going to steal one oh. piece at a time of the car, but it takes him like 10 years to do it. And so it's all these yeah. different. He was using the salami to tactic to steal a car to get, yeah. to, to steal a whole car. Apologies to the pepper. Johnny Cash song uh, fans because I butchered that but it basically i know get the like concept yeah, yeah yeah no it's, it's, it's a funny but it's song. it's also it, it it applies in negotiations it applies to to lots of things where you don't you don't try for the whole thing right away you just gotta keep going just teeny tiny steps teeny tiny steps and pretty soon you're stolen the whole salami folks hey, right, guac's laying next to me under the table and vu just walked under 
opened his mouth and put Guac's head in his mouth. I mean, we... They really are two kindred spirits in just nonsense. I mean, we we almost need to separate them like you separate knucklehead siblings. It is they have really have found each other, frickin' frack. Individually, they're hard. Chomping. Together, they're a force of nature. He's chomping Guac's head. Stop it! Guac is not most folks. No, Guac no, Guac deserves it sometimes. Guac deserves it. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, there they go. Oh boy. Boy, you guys are just, yeah. All right, we're going to have to stop before they pull the podcast equipment off the table. And eat it about foods. Foods would eat it. All right, everyone. Well, we'll get you more updates as they come. Uh, sorry, I don't have exciting surgery schedule no, it's news. it's like but very complicated, actually. Now I'm going to have to figure out if I take my little vacation by myself without you, which I said I was going to do. You did kind of threaten, promise that, yeah, yes. I don't know if I'm going to, but... You're you're totally. I mean, you know that would be great. I would totally be in favor of it. It's just you have to yes. drive. All no, you the way. would be supportive. I know. Yeah, I think it's. I would. You know, I would send you little pictures and stuff. I'd be like, hope you're having a good time. <laughs> oh my God, they're so crazy. All right, <laughs> it's been a long day, everyone. Uh, we'll keep you updated. We'll talk to you next week. Until then, don't bet anyone unless they ask you yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, wear a mask. Bye. Bye. <laughs>